Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm on Brasatea Pacanea, Tisipera Torre. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe a glad countenance in the house of God is probably some better worship than the best song ever written. Maybe just singing along, huh? Just a thank you, Lord Jesus, a hallelujah, a praise the name of the living God. <laughs> right out of the heart. My goodness, that gets, that gets heaven moving around. Brings more honor and glory to the name of Jesus than any, than any song ever written. Just those expressions, those true expressions of thanksgiving coming up out of our life by the Holy Ghost. You know, men, men, are, so, men are so out of it, they don't even know how to be thankful. Huh? you got to have the Holy Ghost just to be thankful. Man, you listen to me. <laughs> I mean, truly thankful. Men just walk in. They're so out of it, they just, they, they got to have more. And so because they don't have more, they're unhappy. They're unthankful. Huh? But then the Holy Spirit comes and shows us what life really is about. And suddenly we wake up, wow, I missed all of that. I missed all of that. Father, I thank you for the miracle working power that is in the name of Jesus Christ that brings healing to the body and healing to the mind. Father, I thank you for the working of the Holy Ghost that brings correction to your church that everything will just stop. That the brakes will be slammed on. And everything comes to a halt. And all the things that we've been doing. And all the things that we thought we've known. And that we thought were right. Father we pray in the name of Jesus. That it just comes to a stop. <laughs> so that you can begin to do it right through us. Amen. So that the, that which you have designed and purposed to be in your house. Will be in your house once again. Just like it was in former days. When, when there wasn't all the things that exist today, it was filled up with your glory. It was filled up with miracle power. It was filled up with signs and wonders power. It was filled up with tongues and interpretation of tongues. It was filled up, oh God, with a glorious shaking of Holy Ghost conviction. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that all those wonderful things that represent your glory and your presence, they'd be seen again. Lord, that your church will become a no, known as the place to bring the sick and to bring the diseased. Uh, your church will be once again known as a place where there will be deliverance and healing. Not programs. Not things that men want to do because they want to do it. Father, we pray that everybody in your church, in your house, throughout the world begin to bow in reverence. Don't come in doing the things they think they want to do. Bringing the things they think they want to bring. Lord, we know there's only one offering that is acceptable to you. And it's the offering of Jesus Christ, your only son. And Father, we pray, oh God, that you, we will come be, be, and bring that sacrifice. Bring that wonderful privilege of being washed in the blood. That reverence, that offering that comes by the Holy Spirit himself. These expressions of divine glory. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your church once again will be seen as a place where there's great Holy Ghost conviction and Holy Ghost reverence. Father, we're the mentally afflicted. Lord, we're the mentally insane and the tormented be delivered. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that we would step over into that realm of cooperation with you, that the things that you fully described in your word will begin to happen in our midst. Lord, then, rather than to be so... So headstrong that we continue doing it the same way and not having your results. Father, it seems plain to me that you've purposed for us to throw the brakes on. Just stop what it is we're doing. Ah, Zabotai. Langabaya. Return to what happened on the day of Pentecost when the, when the glory fell with your fire and your presence upon your church. And everybody began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. ha, <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> where, 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 where your glory and your power begins to move in such a way that the whole place is filled with joy. Yeah. Father, hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that each man and each woman, each boy, each girl will forsake their ways. And they forsake their thoughts. Hallelujah. 
and turn to your ways and turn to your thoughts. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that all the things that, that folks want to hang on to in this world, in this life, their reputations, their ideas, their businesses, their jobs, their enterprises. God, everyone would just let go. Come grab a hold of you. There's no blessing in the enterprises. There's no blessings in holding on to our lives. The blessing is taking a hold of you and following you in the ways of life. Father, may everybody hear you saying, come over here. Here is where the blessings are. <laughs> Walk in this way. Here, here is where life is forevermore. Here is where uh, is joy, the uh, joy unspeakable exists. Here, here, this place is the place of peace that passes understanding. Well, people have got to realize if you're not living in joy unspeakable and full of glory, you're living in the wrong place. All you have to do is just be willing to just take, take an a inventory, just take a look at what's going on in your life. If you're not living where peace is that passes understanding, you're living in the wrong place. If you're not living in a realm where love just so overwhelms you, which is the love that passes knowledge to know the love of Christ, if you're not living in that place, I mean, I'm telling you, you're captivated by it because once you get a glimpse, <laughs> you can't turn away. It's the most beautiful thing you ever saw. You just got to stand there and gaze. Yeah. All we have to do is just stop. Say, hey. The map says we're supposed to be here. And we ain't there. It says we're supposed to be up here on this mountaintop and all these things around us and a big old lake right out in front of us and we here in the middle of the desert. We took a wrong turn. Oh, God, help. Oh, God, help us. We lost. We took a wrong turn. <laughs> Come do a work of miracle. Bring us back unto yourself, O oh God. To that place of divine power and glory. To that place, O oh God, where the moving of your spirit is like the breaking forth of waters. It's like a rushing mighty stream. It's like rivers that anybody who gets near it, they swept away by the current. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that the earth can look upon, the world can look upon your church and they can see a fruitful, beautiful place with plenty. A fruitful, beautiful place where all provision of all that men have ever needed physically, spiritually, materially is there provided. Oh, separate. Father, I ask you for revival. I ask you for the revival of that which you put in your church, the inheritance that you placed within your church. You know, when Israel sinned against God again and again and again and wouldn't do it his way, ultimately they were given over. And because of the transgression, because of their sin, they were so given over that there was no dated revival for them but Judah on the other hand and especially because Judah was separated unto that to that one that the Lord had made a covenant to see there's two people that stand out that God made a covenant a promise to one of them is Abraham the other is David you'll hear about the covenant because of Abraham I'm going to do this because of David I'm going to do this from Abraham up to David pretty much because of Abraham I'm going to do this and from David on through the kings and through Israel to the days of Christ Jesus, because of David, I'm going to do this. Sure mercies of David. And God dated a revival, and he said, I'm going to bring you back into your inheritance. I'm going to give you another shot at this. <laughs> and that, when, when you've been taken into captivity, and you've been removed away from all that God had blessed you with, and then you come back into it by God's divine grace and mercy, that's revival. 
That's the coming back into the inheritance. And what's happened is many people have been carried away into Babylon, don't know it. Many people are carried away under the oppression of the enemy and don't know it. They can't cry out for revival. They think they in the inheritance. And that's why I say over and again, if there's anything people need to do in this, in this day of great deception and seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, is start reading the Bible. Somebody said, I read the Bible. I want you to read it more. Uh, if you spend an hour a day reading the Bible, you'll make it through the Bible in 90 days from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21. In 90 days, an hour a day, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes of the afternoon or evening, whatever. And then you just go ahead and start doing that for a little while, about four times a year at minimum. And then what's going to happen is you're going to begin to get an overview. God, the Holy Ghost, is going to have an opportunity to talk to you and begin to show you, wait, hold up here. Something strange is going on around here. This don't look like what? This doesn't look like the land that God described. This doesn't look like the place that he described. This isn't the realm that he has uh, given freely to us. People living in another place. Keep filled with humanity. When you're filled with yourself, when you're filled with humanity, it's hard to operate in the realms of the spirit. Ah, Ramon Zepe. Men have to forsake their ways. They have to forsake their thoughts. They have to be willing to deny themselves, <laughs> hallelujah, and begin to embrace the cross of Jesus Christ. You know, we, we say, Lord, we want to know you in the fellowship of your sufferings. And the Lord's like, yeah, good. And then as soon as a few, a few bit of rejected love comes along and things aren't working out uh, like you want them to, suddenly you're like, Lord, what's going on now? But the Lord said, look, you know, you need to fellowship with me. You need to be so thankful and so blessed that you're standing up here on my side, that you're, you're doing things. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, people, if you want to get, get in a blessing of the Lord, all you need to do is begin to minister on and teach about righteousness. And that's why the Lord Jesus points out to us, blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sakes. Righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And um, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> I don't really know too many people that are persecuted for righteousness sake because we become so apostate that all we talk about is unrighteousness. But the scripture and the faith is man believes unto righteousness with his heart. Huh? With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Isn't that beautiful? See, what happened to me was Jesus bore my sins in his own body on the tree that now I'm dead to sin so that I might live unto righteousness. See, people run around and saying, oh, there's none righteous. We're, no, not one. We all unrighteous. They take in Scripture out of its context and they try and misapplying it to those people who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Those people who have received the righteousness of God, who have been made the righteousness of God. I've been born the righteousness of God. Amen. Uh, Jesus became the sin offering for me <laughs> that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Made it. Made it. Born it. Born into this. Born. And we, God wants you to come into a, Father wants you to come into a place in the Holy Ghost. Uh, that the richness, the riches of heaven <laughs> and the richness of heaven begins to fill you up. In such a way that you don't want to even be anywhere else. You don't want to do anything else unless the Holy Spirit is doing it. God, this, this, is, a, this, is, the, this is the rich land. This is what it means to be a rich man or to be a rich woman, to be filled with wealth. Where you and I are able to live in the Spirit, live in the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost live in us. Where we're able to walk in the Holy Ghost, to have literally the understanding of God, the mind of Christ. To be privileged, to be endued, to be endued with the very life, the very, the very glory and, and presence of Jesus Christ. To put on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are willing to be filled up with the Spirit... I mean, it just, it, it's a redemption of the time. There's a, this is the way you redeem the time for the days are evil. Be filled with the Spirit. Be continually filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine. People walking around today with the cup of judgment in their hand and saying it's liberation. No, you're declaring you've got judgment on you. It, the, the cup of wine the, uh, has always been a declaration of the cup of judgment. Go read the Bible again. 
It's, ne it's, ne it's a revelation of the cup of judgment. <laughs> Anybody who's got it is about get, getting ready to get smacked from heaven. They are. They're the under the under judgment. And yet people walking around, they intoxicated. They drink in the wine of this world. They drink in the intoxicants of this world. And they're missing out on the glory. However, if you come over and you stand be filled with the glory, be filled with His presence, be filled with the things of the Spirit, there won't be any, you won't, you won't want anything else. You know, you look at the world and you'll go, my goodness, that is just an ugly, messed up place. Man, no thanks. Forget about it. I don't want any. I'm over in another realm. Father's coming, calling us to come into a place that is other from the, it's different from the rest of everything in the world. And it is separate from everything else that is in the world. It's opposite of everything in the, that is in the world. And thus we define it as holy. Because it means opposite. It means separated. It means consecrated. That's where he is exalted gloriously in his holiness, in his separateness. He hasn't got any of the stuff that's going on in this world going on in him. And you know the beautiful thing of God's love and God's righteousness is he sees men in his sick, their sin and their sickness and their disease. He sees men in, the, in, their, in, their, in their defilement and their uncircumcision. He sees them... Uh, Almost as an uh, aborted child, in, uh, contaminated with their own blood, helpless. And he comes and he washes us up and he cleanses us up and he dresses us up and he takes care of us. Huh? You know, the beautiful thing about God's love is there's no rejection with his love. There is never rejection. Anybody who feels rejection, you're feeling something that's totally satanic. It's totally satanic. God says, come over here to my holiness where you don't feel no rejection anymore. Right. See, Father is so devoted to leading us. He's so devoted to keeping us. He's so devoted to training us. He's so devoted to teaching us that the spirit of truth has come. And he's dedicated to anyone who wants to learn the ways of righteousness to establish us in the ways of righteousness. And the Lord Jesus gave us his blood to continually wash us and cleanse us through all of our mishaps, mistakes, failures, and shortcomings. Because we're dedicated to learning. And even when you fail, God still, even when you walk away, even when you backslide, God's still not rejecting you. He's seeking you. He's longing for you. He's reaching out. He's calling. He's pleading with you. There's no rejection until there is a final day of decision that says, okay, your time is up. You stood there making a decision for 80 years. And if you can't get it done in 80 years, you're not going to get it done. I, we watch as, as God as God's dealing with men. Men lived 960 years. Nothing changed. If you can't get it done in 960 years, you're not going to get it done. Then the Lord ratcheted it back a little bit. <laughs> because he saw if you're not going to change, you're not going to change. I mean, I, I, you know, I heard growing up being blessed to be mentored by such wonderful men of God, and they would tell me about, look, you know, it's a miracle of sizable proportion for somebody to give their life to Jesus after they're 50 years of age. 60, the miracle just went up. 70, up further. Because people become so hardened and so set in their ways, so determined. But, oh, praise God for the fire of his presence that keeps us soft. <laughs> that keeps us tender towards him. I mean, I just woke up this morning saying, oh, God, I want to know you. Oh, God, I want to serve you. God, I want to do it your way. Father, I forsake my own ways. I forsake my own ideas. Lord, we want to hear your word. We want to experience your word. Oh, God, we want to move with you. You have released all heaven into our charge, God. You lift and release all the glory of heaven, all the authority of heaven into our charge, O oh God. Father, show us where the error of our ways, Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to return unto that place of yieldedness to you. Where the beauty of heaven can shine forth through our lives just like it shines forth through you, just like it shined forth through Jesus. Because you and I are supposed to be here, the representation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you right now, if you think things got to work out for you living in darkness, just let's settle it. It's going to get worse. You can't fix darkness. You can't fix demons. You can't get them to act right. 
They're never going to cooperate. They're never going to bring you happiness. They're never going to bring you. They're never going to bring you satisfaction. They're never going to do you right. They're going to torment you day and night. Somebody says, "Well, it's a terrible thing. Die and go to hell, and then and be tormented forever." You're already in it, man. You're already tasting what you're going, and it's going to get worse. Why don't you just step over and get into the blessings and get into life where the torment is gone? Well, somebody said, well, I, I want to do that. I want to do that. Hey, sin's hooked up with torment at the hip. You can't separate them. It's true. They're Siamese twins from hell. One leg is sin. The other leg is torment. With the two heads waving around. Jesus, help us. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Just to have a revelation. <laughs> Just to have a revelation. God, the Holy Ghost, retains all right to revelation. And as soon as we begin to obey Him, He'll cause us to see more. He call, in His grace, He causes us to see and know that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son, the, the way, the truth, the life, that no man comes to Him without, without this wonderful grace and mercy found in Jesus alone. And He gives every man, the Holy Ghost gives every man that insight. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. They'll see that I'm the Savior, the Redeemer. The, gra the, the grace of God that, is, that has come has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. This is a reality for our lives right now. The light has come, and men that sit in darkness have seen great light. It's true, however, that men love darkness rather than light because they love evil. But here, this revelation came, and when we respond to that revelation of who Jesus is, a miracle takes place, and we begin to have a fellowship with God as newborn babes. But then there's other things we're going to have to be willing to obey, too. We're going to have to be willing to be taught righteousness. The Holy Spirit has come to teach us righteousness. People want to just continue on in unrighteousness. They want to continue on in their own ways. Dear people, folks, they, say they, they think that God should accept them the way they are. God doesn't accept you the way you are. He calls you the way you are. He calls you to come. And he changes you because there's nothing acceptable to him unless it's holy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he changes us in his grace and his mercy. I'm continually pleased with us. He said, oh, God just needs to accept me the way I am. And if he was a God of love, he would just put up with me. No, man, because you're going to contaminate everything. And then heaven's going to be hell. Heaven's heaven because God is there and he is dedicated to his ways. And if it changes at all, you know, I said to the Lord, said, Father, why do you let sin go on? Why do you let this thing run like it's running? Why didn't you just bring it all to an end when it, when it raised its ugly head? And the Lord made it known to me through his word and by his spirit. He made it known to me that he allowed it to continue on. So that all men and all angels and all creation will forever see that where there's the least little bit of sin allowed, it will ultimately run to ruin to the place where all that partake of it will hate God and want to destroy him. And that's the end of it. That's the end of it. That's where the, that's where the fruit, that's where sin is fully ripe. That's when the Lord says, thrust in your sickle. We're all men gathered together to try to overthrow God as an alien invader. Say, let us break off his bands from us. Who is he to tell us how to live? Who is he to tell us what to do? We all have the right of choice. <laughs> yeah, you have the right to choose. There's no question about that. But that doesn't mean the Lord's going to agree with you. <laughs> hey, he's made a way where now you and I can agree with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And, and he made a way to where we don't have to agree with him just because we're, we're trying to understand it from a mental point of view. He made a way to where we can agree with him by putting his spirit on the inside of us and, and, and causing us to see things differently through the new creation. See, you can't enter into the realms of heaven. Heaven's right here and available right now. But you can't enter into the ways of heaven until you're born of the Holy Ghost. A miracle new birth. And it's as radical and it's as real as when you were born of your mama. It's as radical, it's real, it's definable. It's an event that changed you, changed your way, changed your desire, changed what you want. It, it, it brought you out of rebellion into a place of submission. Brought you out of darkness into light. 
It brought you out of cursings into blessings. It brought you out of shame into glory. And the redeemed that the Lord has returned and come with singing unto Zion. Hallelujah. And everlasting joy is on their head. They have obtained gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing fled away. What, listen, I'm not talking no fairy tales over here. I'm telling you this is a reproducible event, but it's going to demand an absolute change, a miracle change, an absolute radical, totally head-to-toe, spirit, soul, and body change. And that's not anything that any single person that has ever lived can do for themselves. God does it for us in His grace and His mercy. Not because of any, any righteousness or any works of righteousness which we have done, but because of His great love wherewith He's loved us. People are overwhelmed with their failure. They're overwhelmed with the things that they didn't do right. You need to just get, yourself, you get your sight set right. Understand that the leper cannot change his spot. The Ethiopian cannot change the color of his skin. And you can't change anything about you. Not the height, not the color of your hair, nothing. But the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of grace has come with miracle changing power. And you don't begin in the Spirit to now be made perfect by the flesh. You begin in the Spirit to now live by the Spirit, to be taught of the Spirit. So that He can in every way bring you into all the conduct and behavior and manner of living that Father Himself possesses. And that doesn't, uh, does, has no end to it. It lasts forever. We, Jesus Christ has given us his life, not another life. People want to hang on to their life because they've not seen this life of Christ. God has given us his life. It is a glorious life. People hold on to their life because they've never had an encounter with the life that God has given to us as a free gift. And when you do, you don't want your own life anymore. Hallelujah. So people say that, that's, to some folks that sounds like suffering and imprisonment and misery and hardship. And oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? I can't live my life, you know, my own life anymore. You're going to get a better one. You're going to get promoted. As people try to imagine heaven, you can't. People try to imagine. I hear people talk about heaven and I say, you have, in my mind I don't say it all out. You've not been there. Because if they came here and tried to, if they, somebody went to heaven and came here and tried to describe it, they would do it just pretty much like Paul. Can't tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I just don't know. I just can't tell you. But I can tell you something about what happened. <laughs> it's just that you can't describe it. It is beyond. It is, I, I have, I've not been to heaven, but I, in, where God himself is, only in a dream, but, but I have been in the heavenly realm deeper and deeper, caught away into a glory that I am, a, I am acquainted with firsthand. I am more than familiar with. I've been introduced to, and I recognize it. I recognize the realm. And it is God's desire that all men are filled with the glory, this glory realm. If there's any message that the church of Jesus Christ needs to receive today, it's this message. Receive the life of Christ. <laughs> if there's anything that people, if God's going to, if you're listening to me right now and you're an evangelist, I'm going to tell you this is what the Spirit of the Lord's saying to the churches today. He wants evangelists and ministers raised up to go to his church and say, receive the life of Christ. And have a Holy Ghost conviction and a message from heaven that will cause people to realize they're missing out. Listen, if there's torment in your life, it's not God. God isn't tormenting anybody. Demons torment men. God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. An abundant life. Somebody said, what does that mean? That is an indescribable life. That's what that means. Huh? Jesus said, I, I can't put it in any other words. They wouldn't be able to understand it. And the human language doesn't have the capacity to communicate it. So I'm just going to say abundant life. And it's super abundant. And, and we try to breathe in a little bit deeper. Get in an oxygen chamber. Try to feel better. It still ain't going to work. <laughs> Try to heap all kinds of good things around us. Get all, get everything, get everything. Go play to get your bank account bigger. Huh? Still ain't gonna work. All, you got, all that's gonna happen is the rich, the well, those who are wealthy, are just tormented more in the night. Dear people, God has given to us an awakening. He has come to us and given to us an understanding that we may know Him, and His only begotten Son, whom He has sent. 
He has sent to us the Holy Spirit, the riches of heaven, to now show us how to begin to behave ourselves in this realm so that we might begin to receive the abundance of all that he has freely given to us. If God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for the sins of us all, how shall he not by him also give us all things freely? When you've received freely, you can receive freely. Let me tell you something. Every decision, every decision that you make has a consequence. You may be justified in your decision. You may think you were right in your decision. You may not even really know why you made the decision. Because there, I watch people, they'll get sparked. And even in my own life, you know, I can look at it. I'll get sparked with some kind of an imagination or some kind of thing that I thought, thought maybe someone said or someone did or I thought it should have worked out better or I thought it should have been different. And I may be out of disappointment or out of rejection or or out of fear, I make a decision, and then I build around that decision a justi justified, rational reason, and then I go in it, and I'm going to end up with the wrong thing. I'm going to. I'm not going to end up with the blessing of God. I'm. A, I'm Father still loves me. He has rejected me. He's still on me. He's still trying to teach me He's true, the ways of life. He's trying to get me to hear. He wakes up every morning, putting his hands before in front of me, beckoning me to come. Say, come this way. Quit being obstinate. Quit being stiff necked. And if I don't get it, if I get so used to making my own decisions, I'm going to get my own results. People miss out on the blessings of God or have blessings deferred over and over again because they simply want it or they're hard headed. They want to just do it their own way. They've not, they've not been, had an encounter with God enough to recognize how much of their decision-making process is based out of a self-centered realm at, at best and, then, and, and at worst under the demonic influence. And many times it's a com combination of both. The circumstances of the world around you is not what God is using. It's what Satan is using. Huh? God doesn't speak through circumstance. Show me the chapter in the verse. God speaks in a totally different way. I've heard way too many people start talking about how God speaks through circumstance. How God leads us through circumstance. Give me a break. What Bible are you reading that is just absolutely opposite? He speaks directly to our heart by his spirit. He comes to lead us and guide us into all truth by the Holy Ghost, not some truth. We walk in in some truth because that's the areas of our own rebellion and stubbornness. We're not willing to be submitted to authority. And, you know, men thought they were one day they thought they became liberated because now they're questioning authority. Oh, aren't we just brilliant? Aren't we just intellectual giants? We're questioning authority now. And then it went from questioning to authority to despising authority. And we've lived in that for the past 20 years. And now it has its ultimate conclusion of defying authority, which is now where we're going now. It's anarchy. That's its ultimate conclusion. Sin, when you, stay, when you take one step in sin, if you don't repent real quickly, if you don't get out of it real quickly, you're going to take an inevitable second step. There's no other place to go. It's going to have an ultimate conclusion, and the conclusion is death. For the wages of sin, the wages of disobedience. Somebody said, oh, but there's so much insight by, you know, the psychologists and so much insight by the clinical scientists and so much insight by this one, the political scientist, and on and on. Wait, 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 wait a minute. There's only one light into our path. There's only one way to see in the midst of all the confusion and all the darkness. Somebody said, where is the real God? Where is the right way? Where is the truth? Where is the real voice? Hey, right here. Father's watched over his word to perform it. All you got to do is quit reading the Bible with your slanted view. And stop, stop spin casting everything God says so it aligns up with your doctrine. Actually, doctrine is the teachings of the Holy Ghost, the teachings of God by the Holy Ghost. When Paul said, if I come speaking unto you with tongues, what shall it profit you? Thus I speak by knowledge, uh, by revelation, by doctrine, by prophecy. Doctrine is not what you distill from your particular denomination, from the particular set of theologians that fed the information to your denomination, which many of them are not even saved. Not even right with God. Have no fear of God. Intellectualism has become bigger to them than God. You listening to me? Because I know what I'm talking about. Huh? If you want to read something good, you know, go back to the 1800s. 1800s and before. You know, there's a few things scattered, but most of it you got to go back. Listen to what somebody's saying. 
you know, like George Whitfield and go back and listen to what he has to say. John G. Lake had many good things to say. There's a lot of people trying to do what John G. Lake did. They, they're not going to get the results because they don't have the consecration. They don't have John G., John G. Lake's doctrine. Huh? When I first heard about healing rooms opening up, and, and I said, oh, praise God. So I was going to grab a hold of John G. Lake's radical doctrine. He had a radical doctrine of total transformation by the blood and by the spirit where you are a new creation, a new man, and that there was no flesh nature anymore, that you are the temple of God, spirit, soul, and body, fully possessed by Almighty God. And so out of that came a faith realm that was unique. You know, people try to do healing rooms like John G. Lake did, but they don't have his doctrine because that's a faith realm. Faith is central to everything we do in God, and without the faith, the fundamental faith of transformation of nature, having been, having been washed with the water of regeneration, having been made a new creation. See, circumcision, uncircum circumcision or uncircumcision has no profit with God, only a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, everything is new. When you become a new creature, you create an and renewed in true righteous and righteousness and true holiness. You become a possessor of the divine nature. You have all these wonderful things that belong to union with God. John G. Lake believed that. Well, I wish people would turn, return to John G. Lake's doctrine. That was teachings of the Holy Ghost. Huh? We slipped far from that, people. The church has slipped far from that. Let me just tell you right now. People have bought into a lie. They bought, they bought into a lie. If you believe a lie, you'll be damned. <laughs> you believe a lie, your one thing is you can have a measurable, a measurable, quantifiable result every day and witness every day as to whether or not you're doing it God's way or your way. Because God way, God's way has fruit. Somebody gave me a peach tree one time, but when it actually got to maturity, it was an apricot. <laughs> uh -huh. It's going to show up pretty soon here what this really is. They lost the tag. Huh? There was a wholesale thing going on in trees because they didn't know what they were. <laughs> when they lost the tags, you could buy everything for half price. If you're willing to just take a chance, whether you're going to end up with a whole bunch of persimmons, or plums. <laughs> uh, uh, ornamental plum trees don't work the same as that. You're with me. Uh, geez. They look the same as, a young, as long, young seedlings, young plants. They look the same. Huh? I want you to open your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 26. God's going to breathe on you. Want God to breathe on you? You know, I'm, in, I'm into teaching and ministering doctrines that are lost to the church. Somebody said, where'd you find them? In the Bible. <laughs> I went on an exploration. I went on a treasure hunt and found them. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about a get rich scream, sh scheme. Scream. I'm not going to tell you about a get rich scream that you'll find through the world and through the earth and through whatever it is. People are saying, I'm going to tell you about a get wealthy one, though, where you get filled with the riches of heaven. I'm going to tell you about getting filled with the riches of the Spirit. Uh, God has given us a wealth that supplies every single person's need. Listen to me. Whether they're tormented mentally, whether they're harassed physically or spiritually, we have the remedy, the solution. We have the provision to make them whole. There's no greater wealth and riches than that. Uh huh. To say to the blind, see the deaf hear, the cripple walk. To say that the dead be raised to life again. That's what the church is supposed to be doing. That's what Jesus did. We sit around and pretend. We play patty cake religion. Acting like we got it when we don't. Listen, God has made it very clear the minute, what the ministry of Jesus is. And the church is has, supposed to have nothing less than the ministry of Jesus. That's who we are. <laughs> and it's, and, and, and ain't nothing going to change till we change. God's not changing. He's already right. Hallelujah. And he said to us the two most precious gifts that he could, the blood of Jesus to cleanse us and wash us and make us holy and acceptable and the spirit of the living God to lead us and guide us and the work of them together to make a new creation to get the whole thing underway. Amen. Hallelujah. To have a new heart and a new spirit. To wake up in the morning. I, feel my, I, I can feel my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to coming right out of right out of my spirit hallelujah somebody said you're not supposed to do that in church oh yeah you are 
Yeah, you are. That's how church got started. Acts chapter 2, verse 4, they were all gathered together in one place doing exactly what Jesus said. That's where the church was born. Everybody, even Roman Catholics, will tell you that's when the church was born. Everybody, I don't know, a theologian on the earth from a denomination that is, that is considered a denomination that will not say that the church was born in the fire of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And that's how it started and that's how it's supposed to continue. Everybody knows that all the fun is in the book of Acts. Everybody knows that that's where the excitement is. Everybody knows that that's where the life of Jesus is. Well, there's some principles. There's some rules. There's some things that we're going to have to pay attention to and allow God to change us. No, we want to go ahead and try to be acceptable to the world. The world, won't, you'll never be acceptable to the world. The world cannot know you. And the world will hate you and hated him. Men became, people took a position trying to be accepted of the world, they became the world. They took on the spirit of the world. We've not received the spirit of the world. Huh. God, the Holy Ghost, who lives in a separate realm, he's not mixing. So if I said I went there and there was a mixture. No, there was no mixture. It was just man and man. It was man and devil. It was the doctrines of men and the doctrines of devils because God's not mixing. Somebody said, oh, I went there. And people were getting healed. And, and yet these people live... Uh, Lascivious lives. I wonder what that is. Is that just the mercy and the grace of God? That's foolish talk. That's foolish talk. Satan does all kinds of things with lying signs and wonders. You listen to me. He's got a host of people that stand to deceive in these last days that do not know Jesus. They say they come in the name of Jesus and they say, in Jesus' name, devils go out. And they say, in the name of Jesus, Sick and diseased be healed. Jesus says, I do not know them. Why? What was the key characteristic? They had sin going on in their life. They were workers of iniquity. Go ahead and read it. I'm going to just teach you the Bible. I'm not going to teach you things about out of men's doctrine. Guy came from Singapore and says, yeah. Says, oh, the United States of America, you guys, you, you guys over here, you guys got the preachers, but we got the teachers. I said, you know what? That's pretty arrogant. It's pretty arrogant. So I'm expecting some real foul stuff to come out of Singapore. And yep, you know what it did? It raised its ugly head in no time. Because people get arrogant. There's only one teacher. His name is the Holy Ghost. You're going to bow low. You're going to cease to exist. You're going to cease to function and cease to operate. You are. And not because, not because there's a tyrant reigning over you, but because you behold the glory and say, What? I'm following you. Lord Jesus, I'm following you. You see the glory. Wow, I'm like, can I live with you? Yes. And, he, and the beautiful thing is he says, yes, come on in. I would have said, no, go to your own house. <laughs> I don't have room over here besides that. I like to have some peace and quiet. The Lord says, come on in. Everybody come cram in the same room. Come on in. <laughs> same room. Holies, holies. Everybody cram on in. Ah, there's room. Come on in. Right here at the cross. Come on. There's room. I had a preacher call me up yesterday, and he was telling me about his woes and his troubles. Wonderful man of God. And that's true. We all have woes and troubles. If we look at him, if we quit staring at Jesus, we have woes and troubles. If we look back to Jesus, and we decide they all flee away. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and so, so I, I began to talk with him, and you know, just talking, just out of the understanding, just talking, counsel, biblical counsels, you know. And then I, then I just, then I just turned, I said, I said, Father, I said, would you please answer the preacher? And then, begin to hit me. I begin to, tongues and interpretation of tongues, and then prophesy. I like to do that. I like to prophesy. I like to go to tongues, interpretation, tongues, and then back to prophecy. Then, you know, I like to do that. But you know what? I'm not in charge. God just does it, and I'm just excited about it all. Wow, that was amazing, you know. But I like doing it. I like participating. It's not like I'm in charge, but I like participating. But at any rate, uh, and then after I got finished, I could, as soon as I got finished, I heard the song go off in my head like a whole choir was singing, singing it. There's room at the cross for you. <laughs> and I, I try to talk, but this overwhelming song inside, inside of my head is going, there's room at the cross. I said, well, you know, brother, I'm going to tell you, I'm hearing the Spirit of the Lord say, there's room at the cross for you. Can you embrace it? Come cram into the room. 
a good place to be living. I know it sounds terrible, but it's a great place. It's a, it's a place of change. It's a place of total transformation. It's a place of total deliverance. It's a place to transcend to the realms of divine power and glory and a life that does not cease. Yes. Hallelujah. Saprum stara teke. Let the church be filled again with the sounds of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, it's a loud, loud sound. It's an ear-busting, earth-shaking sound. You know, meditative Buddhists are meditative. We shout. Hallelujah. We got a river coming out. Hallelujah. So Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for the word. He, he sent his word and healed them. By his word, he cast out devils. Praise God for the utterance of the spoken, declarative word of God. And I pray in Jesus' name, God's people in this place will allow his word to, to fill their mouth, his word to fill their heart, that they'll abandon themselves of the teachings of men and of the doctrines of men and say, okay, Father, we're, learned to, we're here to learn it your way. We're here to be taught your way. God has sent to us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. But that is not going to be possible until we're willing to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. And be led by the Spirit. And that's not possible until you're born of the Spirit. <laughs> and right after that you're supposed to be filled with the Spirit. And baptized in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody said, oh, I'm just happy with a spring. I'm just happy with a bu bu bubble up. I'm just, oh, yeah, the Lord said. And, and, and it shall be like a spring, uh, uh, like uh, wells of water springing up. And, and listen, if you've had the spring, you're going to get real thirsty for the river. I'm telling you right now, if you've had an encounter, you want more. <laughs> just a well spring. I tell you, a wellspring turns into a river over the simple request of the heart. Hallelujah. Father's come to fill us up with his life forevermore. The life of God. God's got the best life. Hey, do you like the life you're living? No? Well, here's a good one. Far, far better one. More than you could think or ask. The very life of God. With all the qualities and, and value and beauty and splendor and blessings therewith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it is so wonderful. It's such a wonderful life. You could be poor and not know it. You'd be poor and not even know it. I was out in the outback with a friend of mine, and we were in, the, uh, we were in um, a place called Halls Creek, which is on the back side of nowhere. I mean, it's the wilderness of nowhere, near, near the, the wilderness of Pitanjaras, in the outback of Australia. And... Uh, uh, a, a dear Aborigine woman came walking up with a tattered dress, barefooted, and just saying, Great things! God's doing great things! Oh, praise God for his riches! She poor and didn't know a thing about it. <laughs> she was caught up in the wealth of heaven. Oh, what a life she's given us! What a glorious life! It has a totally different value system. <laughs> has a total different meaning, to total different way. Father's pleading with all men everywhere, turn from your wickedness, turn from your death, come over here and live. Yeah, yeah. This is the cry of God. And you and I are supposed to be light shining. We're supposed to be so, we're supposed to be so filled with this abundant life. It's a bright witness screaming out to the hearts of men and causing them to say, I want that that you have. Everything about our life needs to be conformed to the image of Jesus. I, I love to hear people talk about predestination. I like to jump right in that. I say, man, praise God. We've been predestinated to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then I got myself a powerful verse of Scripture for that one because I just quoted it. <laughs> I don't have to try to explain how what I just said lines up with that verse of Scripture. When you just quote the word, <laughs> you don't have to do any explaining. <laughs> <laughs> you just declare it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Year 2015 is going to be a great year of exploits for those who are strong. The people who know their God will be strong. We want you to come to the knowledge of knowing God. 
We want you to step in. We are here to administer to you the ability to know the living God. Ha <laughs> ha. I, I have been given the authority and the ability to introduce you to him personally. We have been sent everywhere to be his witnesses, to be his ambassadors, to be his mouthpiece, to declare to all men the unveiling of the living God, to call all men everywhere into a place of oneness with him by way of repentance. I'm telling you right now, listen to me. 2015 is going to be a year the where God's people who are strong. How do you get strong? By the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. How do you get strong? The Word of God abides in you and you defeat Satan at every point. Hallelujah. The Word. The working of the Word. Being willing to participate with God. If there's any word for 2015, I'm saying it's participate. It's participate. It's participate with what God's doing, not what you're doing. Participate with the now thing, not the former thing. Hallelujah. Look around you. Look around you. I hope you can see it. There's enough people participating with the Holy Spirit, doing the same thing, speaking the same thing, minding the same thing, that you feel real awkward and ashamed if you're doing something different. Amen. I pray you get embarrassed immensely. I pray we get embarrassed. Huh? I pray we get embarrassed when we're doing our own thing in the holies of holies. And all the angels are doing that, which God, the Holy Ghost, is leading them to. And we're over there doing our own little thing. And everybody's looking at us out of the corner of eye going, what's wrong with him? Who let him in here? He's messing the whole thing up. Huh? I tell you, when the power and the spirit of the living God begins to start moving the way God wants to move, everybody's going to hit the deck. I'm telling you right now, ain't going to be falling out on the, on, under, uh, under the, and, and being slain in the spirit, so to speak, you know, in the way that people have been used to. It's a power of God mow you down flat on your face to where the, or flat on your back or side or what, upside down on your head. It don't matter. But the bottom line of it is where Holy Ghost conviction grabs a hold of you, you in awe, awe and awareness of his majesty. The moving of the Spirit is majestic. It's beautiful. It's not weird, flaky, and awkward. It's majestic. Somebody said, well, the prophets looked like madmen. But yeah, when he said go dip in the Jordan seven times, it became majestic. It became more powerful than the word of a king of Syria or the great kingdoms of the earth. Huh? It might sound like a might sound a little strange when the modal statara begins to come forth, but then all of a sudden somebody gets up out of a wheelchair because all tongues are supposed to excel into a greater display of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, when God's people become dissatisfied. I mean, Brother Wigglesworth said he was satisfied about one thing, is that it was he dissatisfied with where he was at with God. He wanted more. Amen. I love seeing people who've touched the fire because you want to see more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pop Seymour wanted to see more, so he did. Because he wasn't, being, he wasn't going to be willing to be turned away by rejection that he didn't fit in, that he didn't qualify because of the color of his skin. He didn't let nothing stop him. He didn't say, those guys, uh, if they had love, uh, they would have let me in the building. He, he had his heart set on something bigger than what men were doing. He knew that what they were talking about was truth. Didn't matter how they were showing it. Huh? Hallelujah. You need to get your eyes on Jesus. Uh, well, if they really do. Listen, you need to understand, where's the heart? Where's the passion? Where is the purpose here of the church? You need to get in line with what God's doing. You can't fight God and be right. Hallelujah. You can't resist the Holy Ghost and be right. You can't do it your own way and end up with His way. You're going to have to fall. Repent. People say, oh, let's go call them salvation. No, go call them to repentance. It means that everything about you is wrong. Hey. <laughs> Who wants to hear that? Listen, I came to be cumbered and now you're telling me everything about my life is wrong. I'm out of here. Everything about your life is wrong. It's condemned. It's damned. God in his loving kindness and tender mercy saw men in his sin and in his damnation. He said, I'll make a way of escape for them. But you got to repent. Huh? You have to repent. 
you got to be willing to change. Everything about you change. Now you got to learn how to come sit in the meeting and be corrected. <laughs> and rebuked. Because you're wrong. No, you can't do that. You, no, you can't do that either. No, you're wrong there as well. <laughs> now stop doing that. Well, I can't take it anymore. Listen, God's trying to teach you to be like him. Huh? Yeah. Get yourself. <laughs> hey, look, you're looking at it wrong. You get an opportunity to learn it right. All you got to do is forsake the wrong. Who wants to carry with them the baggage of death? Who wants to carry with them the baggage of the plague? Who wants to carry with them the things that are keeping them back from all the goodness that God has for you? What's wrong with somebody telling you, man, that's going to hold you back into a realm of curse? Don't do that anymore. So the Lord teaches us to instruct people in the ways of righteousness. That's one third of the gospel. I'm supposed to be teaching you to observe all things that he has commanded. That is instructing you in the ways of righteousness. The Lord said if you'll give yourself to the ways of righteousness and learn in the ways of righteousness, then an entrance will be ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom. Then you'll begin to start operating in the gifts of the Spirit for real instead of for fake. Or, or you're having a mixture because you've got a mixture of lives in your life, in, in your spirit, where you're giving yourself to the things of the world and the things of, 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 of demon power, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. And also over here giving yourself over to some dimension of the working of the Holy Ghost through repentance because you recognize you've been having sin going on in your life. Or the worst, the worst scenario is you continue to live in the world under the influence of demon spirits and you go to church and you worship and you praise God and read the Bible like everybody else and you justify that sin. Now a familiar spirit takes over you. And other things that are, uh, would operate by demon power. No, thank you. I'll take his way. I'll take the, I'll take the king's way. I'm not looking for some shortcut to fame. I'm not looking for some other alternate way in. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to be taught the ways of life. I'm looking to be taught the ways of God. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking to be taught the ways of holiness. Holiness means totally separate. God says, come out from among them, be separate, and I shall receive you. Touch not the unclean thing, and I shall receive you. God's, it's, it, 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 the opposite of holiness is that which is of the world, that which is common, that which is common to men, which is also defined as clean, unclean. A synonym with holiness is purity. It's a place of total separation. You can't even begin to understand it. We try to look at it in form. We try to look at it in ritual and it comes far short. There is no holiness without his presence. His presence defines holiness. That's, what, that's where it's all defined from. Holies of holies defines holiness. That's where he lives. And he's invited you and I to come on in. He says to those that are far away and to those that are near, he says, come on in. There's rejection for no one. There's no rejection. You can't get rejected. I mean, with men, you're going to get rejected. They're, as soon as you don't measure up to whatever it is they've defined that you should measure up to, they're going to reject you. God doesn't have that. It doesn't exist in his kingdom. He's always pleading with men. He's always giving men another chance to give you another opportunity with a fresh start. Amen. I'll clean you up, give you a fresh start. I'll clean you up. You need to be clean? I'll clean you up. Fresh start. When? New. Every morning. Mercies. Where does those come from? His love. Open your Bibles with me in Isaiah 26. Now that I'm finished with the announcements. I... <laughs> so I say, well, you just don't do announcements. Well, sometimes we do. I, I had plans on having my wonderful, lovely, beautiful, most amazing wife. And I mean, all of it, every bit of that and more with all my heart. Come up and just, you know, minister some this morning. But I'm just, you know, I'm just not my own person. I'm just captivated, carried away. Saying, okay, Father, what do you want to do now? Huh? Do you know that you have an opportunity to have a complete change in state of opinion? Complete, complete state of mind? You have, a, get, you have an opportunity to have a complete change of demeanor? Attitude? Hallelujah. You know God wants to fill you with his holy emotions? His attitude? His insight. You can just walk around being all sourpuss if you want. Huh? All upset and whatever. Are you with me? Huh? But God is inviting you to come over here and get filled with joy where you just love everybody. Huh? Where he'll fix everything. Where everything will have a solution to it. And not a dead end. There's no, God's got a solution for everything. He's got a, a pleasurable disposition. 
in every situation. Beautiful, isn't it? It's true. And now I want you to look with me in this verse of scripture here in, um, in Isaiah, in verse uh, 20, chapter 26, and verse 29. With my soul, with my soul, have I desired you in the night. Isaiah 26. I'm in Isaiah 26, and I'm at verse 9. I say, everybody's going, no. No. But yeah, you really want to do this. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> With my soul have I desired thee in the night. No. Yes. Yes. With my spirit. <laughs> With my spirit within me. Will I seek you early? For when your judgments are in the earth, then the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Listen, there is never going to be a change that will take place in San Diego, in Southern California, in the nation of the United States of America, or any place in the world until all of a sudden God's people return into the place of their authority. Until God's people return to the place of the life that has been given to them. That place is a complete surrendering over of our lives to Him. To say, look, I'm, I'm done with religion. I'm going after. I want to seek Him. I, I want to have, there's got to be within our hearts some kind of a motivation, some kind of an awareness, some kind of a reality check so that we recognize, wait a minute, if I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, there's these results that I should be having. What do I need to do? I need to, I need to change. I need to repent. What does that look like? That means I'm going to be dedicated to change everything that I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to be dedicated to doing it entirely different. I'm going to be dedicated to speaking different, acting different, thinking different, living different. I'm going to start with some basic principles like desiring the sincere milk of the word. I'm going to start with just me and the Bible on a daily basis. People would say, well, I, I, you know, I, 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 so many people, oh, yeah, I pray without ceasing. I just look at them. <laughs> and you, if you did, it would be a totally different disposition of your life. I don't pray without ceasing. I want to. I want to. But you're, if you're going to, you're going to have to give yourself to some measurable goals. The psalmist said, I praise him seven times a day. If you just talked about seven times a day, and you put it down into the framework of, you know, 14 hours. Okay, give us a 14-hour day. That means you're praising him every two hours. If you just put it into the daylight hours, well, you're, that's a, even more fre a, a greater frequency. You're stopping. And then if you hook, and, and it worked out good for David, so just, I mean, if it's working good for someone, follow them, imitate them. Don't imitate, you know, ordinary, everyday people. Imitate people who, may, who, who got the fruit of it. They've accomplished something and got. They, it's provable they went somewhere. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Daniel, he prayed three times a day. He got down and spread out his hands before the Lord and offered praise three times a day. I mean, you could make one of those, one of those three the seven, one of the seven. Or you could just go ahead and add three more to the seven, especially if you're going to praying without ceasing. Huh? Smith Wigglesworth, I love his life and imitating his life. He said, I've never prayed for more than 15 minutes in my life that I know of, but I've never gone 15 minutes without praying. So figure that out. So he had measurable goals. Measurable goals. He wanted to keep himself over in a place where he was continually being filled with the Spirit. He was continually being, uh, you know, giving himself voluntarily, because the word for 2015 is participate, continually giving himself voluntarily over to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit would be the one speaking through him and he wasn't spinning his opinion. Because what happens is you can get so accustomed to spinning your own opinion, that's what you get strong in. You're strong in your own opinion, but you're not as strong in delivering the word of the Lord because you never shut your mouth long enough to be strong in delivering the word of the Lord. I, I know the difference between the unction of the Holy Ghost, the moving of the Holy Ghost, and when I'm speaking by the Spirit, and when I'm speaking by me. Now what am I going to do? 
Am I going to measurably give myself to not speaking by me anymore and start speaking by the Spirit? Many people don't even know the distinction between the realms. They've never had an encounter enough to know the distinction between the realm. Well, we want to get you started knowing the difference between the two realms. God has poured out His Spirit. He says, surely as I live, the whole earth will be filled with my glory. And He's poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. He's called all men everywhere to come. He's, he's, he's let now this ability, given us this ability that these waters of heaven would flow out of our innermost being into a great river that would fill the ocean that covers the whole of the earth with the glory of His presence. Amen. I get to participate with that. So do you. Did you know that? Did you know that you get to participate with the glory of the Lord filling the earth? Did you know that? For declaring His Word, living by the manifest fruits of the Spirit in your life, the wonderful glory and overflow of that which God, the Holy Spirit, brings. We're right now, we're the first ones that get to come under the rule of the living God. People say, Jesus is Lord. Well, is He your ruler? He's your Savior. Will you let Him rule you? Ah. Uh, well, if you don't let those who are in his house that he's given power and authority to rule you, he don't rule you either. You listen to me. Oh, well, that would be bondage. <laughs> to be submitted to ministers. No, it's actually a liberation because they're going to help you with your decision so your decision ends up to be a blessing to you because, so that you, don't, you have less of an opportunity to make a decision that's going to be death and destruction to you. Actually, you're now liberated to make the right decisions with greater accuracy. Hallelujah. And the last thing I want is people calling me up in every decision they got. I mean, I'm going to say, come on, give me a break, click. It's an attitude of the heart. It's an attitude of the heart. There is so much of the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of darkness influencing men, and they have no way in which to measure that in their lives because they submitted to nothing but them. And, they, and, and I'm not following them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're going to follow a man, follow somebody who's been ragingly successful, right? Huh? Donald Trump would be terrible to follow him, wouldn't it? Huh? That just sounds like death to me. Huh? But if you're going to follow a man, if don't follow you, because that sounds even worse to me than Donald Trump, actually. Are you with me? Huh? I want to follow the Holy Ghost. I mean, at least, I must say what I'm saying, at least Donald Trump, you're going to be in a nice place. You're going to eat good food. You don't have to worry about the bills. Are you listening? Follow most people and walk around so stubborn and self-centered. What are you going to end up with? Living in a, you know, living in a shack and on a meager existence, constantly worried about everything, complaining about everything. Listen, the Lord wants us to go into a place where we submit ourselves to Him. And there's measurable ways of submitting. We can measure whether or not there's rebellion and stubbornness going on in our life. How do you measure stubbornness? You better find a way. You concerned about the temperature? You got a way to measure that? I know something that's far more important to you than what temperature is going to be tomorrow. <laughs> what the weather is going to be tomorrow. Y'all, what's the weather going to be? All concerned. Is it going to rain, snow, sunshine? There's something far more important to be concerned about. What's the atmosphere you're living in? Spiritual atmosphere. And the only way to deal with spiritual atmosphere is to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. To take unto yourself the whole armor of God. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. Who's a match for spiritual wickedness? Who? The angels of God, the holy angels of God that beheld His glory through, through eons of eternity were taken out by Satan's deception. Who do you think you and I are? Who do we think we are? That the mighty angels can be taken out by Satan's deception. You and, you and I don't stand a chance. His, lamp, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Holy Ghost has come here to be about me as a hedge. I mean, I've been baptized in a hedge. Job just had a hedge. I've been baptized in a hedge. Hallelujah. Filled up with the hedge. Hallelujah. The hedge busting out of every part of my being. And the Word telling me exactly how it works. So that every area of my life must come and be checked by the Word. Does it line up? If it doesn't line up, it's wrong. And it's going to lead to something even worse. Hear me. That's what God says. That's what the Spirit of the Lord says. 
you tell you and I, Father's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. But we're going to have to get some, we're going to have to get some motivation. We're going to have to have some inspiration here. We're going to have to rececognize. Wait a minute, we don't have the results that God, Father's asked for us. So let's just let's just humble ourselves, become like little children, and begin to start right at the beginning and say, "Okay, Father, correct me in every one of my ways, every 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 one of my attitudes, and every one of my expressions." And when we begin to talk to Father like that, He's going to do it. This is a beautiful thing. He will do it. <laughs> He who has begun a good work in you will finish it. Yes. But you've got to participate. Yeah. He's not gonna, he didn't begin a good work in you offline of you, absent of your will, absent of your participation. He began a good work in because you humbled yourself. You cried out said, Father, take control of my life. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior. I surrender my life to you. Having begun in the Spirit, now God wants to perfect us by the Holy Spirit. He wants to grow us up. He wants to mature us. But there's, there's got to be a clear definition of we walking in our own way versus walking in his way, doing it in our own way. And, and how are you going to know whether or not you're doing his way? Unless you've got people around you with more insight than you. Huh? Unless some God in a miracle provision somehow gifted somebody with an anointing to represent him. People want to make it purely human. Wait, no, no, no. There's a God realm. There's a divine realm. There's something going on that goes beyond the human realm. You and I just got to say, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So what is that? Surrender. I'm done. I'm done. It's actually completely yieldedness. It says, let the lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. You know what you do with the evening sacrifice? You light on fire. I'm burned up. Offered up a living sacrifice. I'm holy. Yes. Are you holy? Yes. Yes. But if, you're, if you don't know if you're holy or not, you don't know if you're saved or not because God gave us the gift of holiness. He made us one with him. How much holier can you get? See, see, it was established for righteousness to Abraham because he simply believed God. God gave him this picture of something that goes far beyond anything that was imaginable. You've got to be kidding me. You're giving me all of this. And then Abraham didn't go, hey, look, God, how's that going to work? I don't see how that's going to work. You know what happened to Zechariah when he said, I don't see how it's going to work? The Lord said, you're not speaking no more. He said the wrong thing. Elizabeth's going to have a baby. How can that even happen? I'm an old guy. You're not talking no more. You're done. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. We don't want anything out of you for nine months, Zechariah. Uh, when the baby's born and you see it, because unless you believe, you will not be established. And our words come out of our mouth and they work contrary to that which God has purposed to bring to pass in our lives. And we don't get it. We, God says that if we bless, we'll inherit a blessing and we continue on cursing. <laughs> the Lord gives gives Abraham this expanse of divine blessing, miracle provision. And, the, and he just sees us like a little child and says, yes, I take it. And the Lord counted that to him for righteousness because he believed God. Huh? Unless you believe, you'll never be established. You know, the, the prophet standing there looking, at, uh, prophet Isaiah standing there looking at Isaiah. I mean, forgive me, at Ahaz and saying, look, God's going to do whatever it takes to convince you. What do you want? Ask for any sign because you're, you, whatever it takes for you to believe the miracle, he's willing to do it. Because until you believe it, you're not going to see the miracle. People are still waffling back and forth on whether they're saved and how much they belong to God and whether or not he's the healer and all their ideas. We get all of our ideas mixed in with the word of God. People say, oh man, he preached the pure word of God. Hey baby, you wouldn't know it if he did. Oh, he's preaching the pure, pure word of God. How do you know? Because for you to declare that he's preaching the pure word of God says that you know what the pure word of God is. Are you listening to me? And knowing the pure word of God, there's going to be some serious results. Are you with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. His word, it might have been pure, but as soon as you heard it, it got mixed with your ideas and it got contaminated. Uh-oh. The word of God is 
like silver tried in earthen vessels seven times. There's no impurity left in it. And you're the earthen vessel. So how do you like the relationship now? How are things going to you now? Now that it's getting hotter. Are you saying, oh God, turn the fire down? Or are you saying, Lord, let the fire fall? Lord, I want it to be. Because God's word is not going to be pure in you until you participate. Until you do it. And it brings forth the peaceable fruit. So it yields his results. Hello. I pray I've jerked self-justification completely out from underneath you and you sitting on the floor now. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you don't leave out of here saying that this was a motivational meeting. <laughs> but it was a fire of God, you in the hot seat service. Hallelujah. It's time to change. Amen. It's time to change. Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, you all you do is preach about change, my yeah, and when it's all the change is done, I'll be caught up because I'm a minister of change. Amen. When all there's no, no need for a preacher like me declaring change to his church, I'm going up. Because <laughs> there's another message from, from another messenger. Huh? But right now, I'm going to be calling you up. People give themselves to their coaches to be fine. Think of you're going for the Olympics. I mean, I'm telling you right now, you might have been successful in high school and in college. But now you're going to go for the Olympics? Everything you've learned, it's erase it right now. We're taking you to another level. We're going to skill you to where you're going to refine yourself to get two more seconds out of you. And to get two more seconds out of you, you've got to learn it all different. Eh? And yet we submit to that, and everybody sits on the sidelines cheering. Wow, look at that performance. Well, you know what? This needs to get applied to the house of God, Amen. to people who want to become skilled in the things of the Spirit. Right. People who want to become skilled <laughs> in the expressions of divine power and glory. And that's what I'm about. That's what we're about. I want, you to, I want to read just a couple more verses of Scripture to you here in the same chapter. I want to back up to verse 2. Open the gates to the righteous nation that keeps my truth. That, in other words, it's literally that keeps, that keeps um, hamit or faith with me or trust with me. That keeps trust with me. Hallelujah. It is the four, it's Habakkuk 2.4. Uh, which is uh, Habakkuk 2.4 is, uh, is the means by which or the cornerstone by which Paul uh, expressed all of the doctrine of justification by faith. It's the same word, to trust. Open up the righteous nation who's going to trust me, who's going to know that the work that I've begun in them, I will, perf I will perform it. I will keep them. I will establish them. I will bring them into a place where that ultimately they're found in, in everything and in, in blessed with everything that I've purposed for them to have. That's participation. Father's got a door open to us. The door is Christ Jesus. So that we step into this that Isaiah is expressing here in verse 2 of chapter 26. Even a far dimension, far greater dimension than, than what Isaiah could have been opening the door of opportunity for them at that moment in time. He said, do we go on, go on down here with me to verse 7. It says, the way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright ways the path of the righteous. Yea, in the way of your yes, in the way of your judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul <clears throat> is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired you in the night, yea, with my spirit within me will I seek you early, for when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. That is the great awake, that is great awakening power. That is transforming power. Revival to the church and then an awakening to a lost and dying world. First a revival to the church, then an awakening to a lost and dying world. We, we, want, we, want, at, we, want, God to, we want God to bring an awakening to the world so that they can live a compromised life. No, we want God to bring an awakening to the world so that they get step right over into heaven. That isn't going to happen until you and I step over into heaven. We step over into a greater place of separation and consecration under the one who's given to us the opportunity to live here as his only begotten son. Let favor be, here's, here's, what, here's what the Lord says in verse 10. I want you to listen to this. Let favor, God's favor, where he just goes ahead and gives grace, okay? Says, okay, I'm going to give you a chance. You've not wanted to learn anything about my ways. 
You just wanted to do it your own way. You just want to believe it like you believe it. And the crazy ideas that Satan persuades men with are just more than could be numbered. Okay? But even though you just want to live it the way you want to live it and do it like you want to do it and believe it like you want to believe it, I'm going to give you an opportunity to see how much better it is to do it my way. That's what he's saying. Let take that person. Let favor be shown to that person. Wickedness is just a, is an act of stubbornness that says, I don't want God's way. I want my way. Okay? Put them in the land. Of, let favor be shown to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness? Put him in the land of the upright or put him in the land where all, everybody there is walking in purity and holiness and righteousness filled with all the good things of God. Yet will he deal unjustly? He'll be looking for somebody to rip off, somebody to fight, somebody to hate, be starting an argument. Just a whole mess. Just a hell of a mess. Are you with me? Yeah. Huh? The hell of a mess or the mess of hell. Either way you want to look at it. Right? Yet will he deal unjustly, and he will not behold the majesty of the Lord. He will not look at the results and the consequence of choosing what's right and doing what's right and the blessing of it, how it makes everybody in the house feel happy, makes everybody in the house feel wonderful, makes everybody, causes everything to, to, to be good and lovely. He won't do it. The Lord's calling us to a place of absolute change. I'm going to tell you right now. If the heart of man, and it is, is unrighteous, and the heart of men is wicked, and the imagination of men is wicked continually, then there's got to be a change. After the flood, the, did the flood take care of the, of the wicked, imaginative heart of man? No, it didn't. Because no one in his family got on the ark. <laughs> and, and, and if the disease is in man, and God, and God has purposed that this whole earth be filled with His glory and that He create a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells only righteousness and men are going to be able to walk into this internal, eternal kingdom. There's got to be a cure for the disease of men. There's got to be a cure. God's got a cure. It's the blood of Jesus. God's got a cure. It's the miracle of salvation that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, where everything about us gets changed and becomes like God. Where we have the capacity with a new heart and new spirit, and He puts the Spirit on the inside of us, and He establishes His ways in us and writes His laws upon our heart and upon our mind so that we will do them. Event has got to happen. God's made that event. The question is, do you want that event? What's happened to many people is they've said, yes, I want that event, but what's, what they've done is they looked around them at wrong models, and they've compromised and they've been taught the wrong way. God, the Holy Spirit is saying, come here, walk in this way. I want to teach you. Come walk in the truth. I want to show you how to love 24 hours a day. Oh, I pray 24 hours a day. Do you love 24 hours a day? I want to show you how to joy 24 hours a day. I want to show you how to be happy 24 hours. I want to show you how to have peace. You know what peace is? It's the absence of condemnation. It's not the absence of war. It's the absence of condemnation. That's why I said peace to those who are far away, to those that are near. Come on in. He's not saying, draw not nigh. That's the condemnation of the law. He's saying, now, come on in. I've made a way for everybody to come and behold my majesty. Yet the wicked behold the majesty, and you will not see it. They will not look at it. Though they sit in, the, in darkness and under the shadow of death, and the light has sprung up, and though they've seen the light, what is going to happen? What's the result? They love darkness rather than light. You here because you've responded to Jesus, because you love the light, because you've been willing to behold the majesty of his glory. And to some dimension, you said, okay, Lord Jesus. Some dimension. I prayed that that dimension was a broken and a contrite spirit that absolutely resulted in a miracle change and transformation. People tell me all the time, everybody's saved. 80% of America is saved and on their way to heaven. Did you know that? 80%. Oh, yeah. Praise God. ha, <laughs> ha. That's not true. It'd be a different America if it's true, true. Because people have been, people have made the wrong, have put the wrong notions and ideas and concepts associated with Jesus. My question to everyone is, have you received a new heart, a different one than the one that you were born with? Not one that is wicked, but one that is pure. Has your heart been changed from a defiled, imaginative, evil heart to a heart after, the, after God's own heart. 
Hallelujah. True and sincere heart. Amen. Amen. Do you have a different spirit than the one you were born with? Amen. A different one. A brand new one. One just like Jesus' spirit. Amen. Ha. Huh. One just like God's spirit. I got a new spirit. I got a fresh, brand new baby spirit here. Hallelujah. Right out of heaven. Not Did it come from Adam? Came from Jesus. Hallelujah. Huh. Did not came from man. Came from heaven. I've been born from above. I'm not of this world. I was once of this world, having been born of the generations of Adam. But now I've been born from above. I'm not of this world, even as he's not of this world. A miracle, new birth, a whole new person, a whole new identity. Everything is changed. Everything is new. This Papa Father gives to us. Hallelujah. We embrace it. I say it's mine. You know, Hallelujah. <laughs> Today, you're sitting in here, you're saying, maybe you're saying, you're not certain. I'm telling you right now, you can be certain before you leave here. Because I'm telling you, I'm a, I'll lead you in a prayer of faith that will result in the real thing. And now you just simply give yourself to doing what God says, and it will be established. It will be established. A friend of mine, he's a minister of the gospel, just Lord Jesus in mighty ways, and he said, well, you know what? I never take it for granted that anybody's saved because I've never prayed the prayer of faith with them. I don't know. They could just, I've met so many religious people. <laughs> I, just try, I just get everybody in the category. And if they're going to respond to they're not sure or they're backslidden, they're coming home or anything like that, <laughs> that means that they're not right with God. We want people to be sure. And we're going to pray for them. And once we finish praying, then if they'll simply do those simple things of obeying God, then they're going to be established in this wonderful miracle that goes beyond what we can imagine. Because you might stop and say, well, I need to check myself. Do, how do I know I have a new spirit? Huh? Well, you know you have a new spirit because you feel different about things. Amen. Huh? You feel different about things. You want things differently now. You've got different new desires. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know you've got a new heart because now you want to please God. Huh? You don't want to please yourself. You're not running after the things of this world. You're running after the things of heaven. That's how you know you've got a new heart. If you don't have a new heart and a new spirit, God wants to give you one right now. Father, make a way where there seems to be no way. It doesn't matter what you're stuck in. It doesn't matter what you've backslidden into. It doesn't matter... You know how things have fallen apart in your life. Father wants to make everything new. He, he'll give you a fresh start this morning. I want you to stand with me, please. Everybody stand to your feet with me. Uh, and and we're, just, we're here right now just presenting ourselves before the living God. And we hear what the Lord's saying. I hear what God's saying. I know what the Father's going to do. I don't want anybody to miss out. I don't want anybody to miss out. Those who are strong about to do exploits. I'm going to tell you right now, there is a miracle moving power of God in the year 2015. Listen to me. I'm telling you, I just feel it. Everybody I know is saying this exact same thing. I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. Father's going to rearrange things in his house. He's going to reorganize things in his house. There's a shaking going on. Amen. I, I believe that people are coming to a point where that they don't want just the ministry of the word without the moving of the spirit. We used to sing a song, God is moving by his spirit. Moving through all the earth. Signs and wonders when God's moving. Some people just want to sit around and listen to somebody teach. Listen to somebody declare the word. And they're happy to go home without the moving of the spirit. Hey man, I'm going to tell you tonight, today, if you've been giving yourself to a place of just declaring the word of God without expecting a moving of the spirit, you need to get right with God. Something wrong with you. Hallelujah. Because Father wants the moving of His Spirit. He wants you to step over into a realm of the moving of the Spirit in your life. If you're willing to go through life on a day-to-day -day basis without the moving of God. Somebody said, oh, when I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I lost the ability to speak the English language. You ought to be losing that on a daily basis. I could lose that right now. And some of you know that. There's a couple of things that I would just begin to ask the Lord. And I would just I would go over in that realm. And I better be very careful. Because it's... <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> because it's easy to get into a place of yielding to the Holy Spirit where you just get raptured away. If people will come to realize that the temptation that is in your life, 
the, the, the besetting sin that comes out against you. If you would just realize that all you need to do is be filled with the Spirit. Be baptized with the fresh moving of heaven and you knew and understood how the, the way thereof and how to step into that realm. You would find the place of the overcomer. What happens is people try again and again and again to be made perfect by their discipline. That ain't, it's not going to work that way. You've got in the Spirit. You're now made perfect by the Holy Spirit. God's given us the opportunity to be continually filled with the Spirit, which, means, which is to say, to, to say be continually baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. All we have to do is just understand that here the Holy Spirit has come to lead us and guide us into all truth. He's come to fill us up with this faith. Open the gates to the righteous nation that keeps your truth. The Holy Spirit's come to lead us and guide us into the truth. He's come to teach us all the ways of righteousness. We, you and I, we've received the righteousness that Jesus himself possesses, which is beyond the reach of men. Beyond the reach of mortal men is the righteousness of Christ given to us by a payment that he made when he died at Calvary. As a gift. A gift. A gift that I now open up and I put it on like a shirt. Wow, how do I look? Wow, I really like this. This is very comfortable. This is cozy. I got one of the most comfortable shirts I've ever gotten for Christmas. It's a smart wool shirt. Just this amazing shirt. It's just so comfortable. And the socks, smart wool socks. I mean, I'm like, wow, this is great. <laughs> this is so comfortable. I'm going to wear this. I want to wear it. I'm going to wear it from here on out. I'm not taking it off. What a gift. What a gift. Why would I take off Christ? Why would I take off this life? Why would I be willing to live without the moving of God when he paid such a high price for me to continually have it? Why would I try to do it on my own when he has not withheld any of his great riches from me? This is the question for you, church. Whether you're standing in here watching me on the web right now or watching via a YouTube. This is the question. Why would we in any other for any reason want to go and live any other kind of life having now received this life where we can be taught by God where he's not going to say draw not nigh I've anointed one man to come see me now he's anointed all of us come gaze hallelujah hallelujah the cure is here got the cure for you you got a problem going on in your life? I got the cure for you right now. You feel like a failure? I got the cure for you right now. You feel like you've made so many bad mistakes you can't correct them? I got the cure for you right now. Now, but what you're going to have to do is to participate with the cure. You got to throw in on God here and say, Lord, I can't do it on my own. I'm going I'm to hang, I'm a cleave to you. I'm going to hang on to you. Father is so merciful and so good, so gracious that the goodness of God leads us to repentance. Isn't that amazing? He just leads us. He just leads us. Right now, God, the Holy Ghost is just leading you. He's leading you. He's leading you. He's leading some of you here. God's leading you. He wants you to come to Him. But just abandonment and surrender and say, Oh, God, I can't do it on my own, Lord. Father, I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin, I want to understand how to put you first. I want to learn how to walk with you. I want to learn the, the simple first steps of obedience to the gospel. In other words, first step of obedience to living a good life. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a fountain, healing streams. Never shall run dry. And there's a place of rest I find. For all my burdens I leave behind. 
Just lift your hands towards heaven. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break off every stronghold of the mind. I break off every stronghold of sin, of sickness and disease, of failure, of torment, of condemnation by the power of the living God. I take the blood of Jesus Christ and I sprinkle you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command you to rise up from the place that you're living and begin to shine with the brightness of His faith. Begin to shine with the brightness of relationship. Begin to shine with the brightness of truth. Recognize that your way is no way, but God's way is all the life you've ever desired. This day, give yourself over to walking with Him. Choose Him and live. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, if you've not been filled with the Spirit, receive right now. I command you to be filled right now. Filled up and baptized, overflowing with the divine life and power of the living God. Now, I want to pray for those of you in this place. You've been dealing with some serious problems, and, and you know that things have got to change. You know things have got to change in your life. You know things have got to change in your life. I want you to come right now. I want to pray with you, for you. You know things have got to change in your life. I want you to just come stand up here. We're going to pray with you and for you. You know things have got to change. Suta and Amaya Sita. And the beautiful thing of it is, is Father's brought change. That's what he's brought. He's brought the spirit and power of change. Now, when we begin to pray for you, I want you to understand God has purposed that you don't live the way you've lived anymore. That you don't have condemnation in your life in any way. That you, you know that He's right there for you. If you slip and fall, He's right there for you. He's never rejecting you. But He'll show you a way. He'll minister to you a way to live and to walk where you never stumble or slip or fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the anointing. Father, I thank you for the anointing. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for the mighty moving of your presence upon our lives and upon this church and upon this place. Father, it's your fire, it's your glory that we desire. It's living in, the, it's living in that place of your presence, Lord, and being filled with all the things that you have and that you've freely given. That we desire. Father we pray in the name of Jesus. There would not be one single person in this place. That would live. Short of. This glory. There's not a single person in this place. That are going to be willing to live without this fellowship. <laughs> Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. If you're standing here and you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want you to know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Ghost is present right here, right now for you. Sabara Mangeli Bishipra. Damba Barada Kila. Bamba Bala Satala la Mangeli Bi. Samba Bala la Mangali Eshi. Bakala la Mangeli Bi. Ambra Basata Yala Mangusisi. Mayana Mangese. Mamma Malana Mosebi. So, Ali, you ready? You ready? Ready for some radical change? Huh? In the name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen, if, if I didn't believe that the Lord joined your lives together, I would have never been involved. And so right now, I told you, though, I told you the only way this is going to work is for Jesus to be first. And that there's no way you can get good enough. You just got to start walking with him. Otherwise, the hurt gets so deep. The ditch gets so deep, you can't ever get out. The pit gets so deep, you can't get out. So, Father, we ask you to make it all new. Father, I ask you to take all the hurt away and all the pain away and all the problems away. Start it all over again. Father, jump starts us all over again. He just erases all the problem. Because there's no way you can, uh, you, can't, you can't ever make it up. You know what I'm saying. With him. We could never make it up with him. We could never start fresh with him unless he just erased it all. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now in the name of Jesus. 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 Father, I thank you for your mercy and for your grace that erases the sin, that erases the wrong, that erases everything that is said against us. Father, I thank you for the authority over every demon spirit, every unholy thing. Father, I ask you right now, make things new here. Bring peace. 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 Right now in Jesus' name. You just got to release it. You got to release it. You just got to release it. You just got to release it. You just got to say, I forgive. I let it go. Because there's no way to start again without doing it. No way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I put the blood on you right now in Jesus' name. I put the blood of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ on you right now. It washes away every sin. By now, be filled. By now, be touched. Just stand here. Don't go anywhere. Touched in Jesus' name. God, the Holy Ghost will fill you with so many good and wonderful things. He comes. He comes because we call on Jesus. That's it. Jesus is, he's, the, he's like the rock in the wilderness. When we're thirsty, we speak to the rock and the water comes out. And the Holy Spirit is that water that comes out. We just ask Jesus, fill me with your spirit. And every good thing of life is found in his presence and his Holy Spirit. And his... 
in his water of life, as it were. So just receive right now. Right out of your belly. Right out of your belly begins to flow rivers of the Holy Ghost. Raman de seto. Raman de seto. Kikera steki na kate. Manake she belly na bo sutraya. Beresinai. Beresitain. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Let the Spirit of the living God just touch you. So let the Spirit of the Lord touch you. Power of God touch you. Let the power of the living God come on you. He's here. You look. He's here to touch you. He's here to fill you. The Lord wants you to show you how to. The Lord wants you to show, show you how to drink. He wants to show you how to receive, in other words. He wants to show you how to receive. Receive you. Receive you. Brasatale. Genela. Genela. Genela con Spirito Santo ahora mismo. Genela. Genela con Spirito Santo ahora mismo. Genela. Genela en nombre de Jesucristo. Aleluya. Besta die. Membrus today. Great boldness. Great boldness. Great boldness and confidence in the faith. In Jesus' name. Great boldness. Mambrasateri. Great boldness right now in Jesus. Great boldness right now in Jesus' name. Great boldness now in Jesus' name. Great boldness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Great boldness in Jesus' name. Mandasero. Mangleg J Rusai. Great boldness. Great boldness in the faith. Great boldness in the faith. Great boldness in the faith. Just be filled. Just be filled. Just be filled. Somebody said, I get filled. Hungry heart. Hungry, thirsty. How do I drink? Thirsty. <laughs> How is it that you drink? Well, first is you have to be thirsty. And then once you're thirsty, the rest is pretty natural, pretty easy. Lando seri. Lando seri. Lando serete. Lando bropo. You know, I just, I just heard that. Yeah. With joy, you draw water from the well. Somebody said, where's my bucket? It's with joy. You don't need a bucket. You use joy. With joy. With joy. With joy. With joy. With joy, I draw water. With joy. With joy, I, joy draws water. J-O-Y. J-O-Y. Joy. joy. Lisa Gananea. Hallelujah. With joy. With J. 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 Laporta. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the anointing on Brittany. For wisdom. Yep. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The ability just to yield to the Holy Ghost. The ability to turn. It's so simple. We just turn our hearts towards heaven. We say, Jesus. Come fill me. Come baptize me, O oh Lord. Overwhelm me with your divine power. All I want is you. When these, these, these heart cries come up to heaven, these, just this request from your heart. Right now, in Jesus' name, every hindering spirit, I come in and leave you. The only thing can get in the way, nothing can get in the way. The only thing can get in the way. Only thing that can get in the way is unrepented sin. And how easy it is it to deal with that? You say, Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Be washed. Be washed. Be washed. Be washed. 
be washed. People say, well, I'm just so bad. Well, why don't you just be so good? Why don't you just be so good? Why don't you just be so good? Having faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away and cleanses every stain of sin. Just be so good. Just be so cleansed. Huh? We have people with the blood of Jesus Christ and they don't want to get washed. It's like handing you a bar of soap and you don't want to use it. Throw it back out the window. It's just the application. Lurandas tequili manane. Sutandalea siperinaya tai. Surrene mengesi tu kusivratisht. Malandale. Bande beste. Malamba ghost. Iprafai. Beres tifina. Beres tifina. Beres tifirinai. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. My mom, my mother say, I just receive. Somebody said, how do, I, how do I know that I've received? Well, peace will flood your soul. Joy will flood your soul. Assurance will flood your soul. Everything becomes new in your thinking. There's a place of rest I find where all my burdens I leave behind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sikara na zebre beste. Malanda debre se. Now listen, your husband was coming to church. You weren't coming with him. You gotta come. You need to be in the meeting. Otherwise you drift. You drift. And sickness in their body any sorrow in their soul any torment in their mind anyone in the place if anyone in the place have any sickness in their body anyone in the place Jesus Christ is here to heal you what we do is we wait for the moving of the spirit 
We just wait for people to get there, just to begin to surrender themselves to the Lord. As we begin to surrender ourselves to God and just begin to believe Him, suddenly a provision comes from heaven that meets every need. Meets every need. Changes every life. Oh, Rasataya, the Masakura Difi. Alamambrasataya. Hallelujah. What do you need? Pardon me? You have a frozen, frozen shoulder. How did it freeze up? Inflammation. And muscles. So what does it do? Is you can only go so far with it? Try to lift it up. I just to see you lift it up as high as you can, please, for me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to take the pain out right now. Thank you for the healing anointing. Looks like you're lifting it pretty good. I can see, I can see the inflammation. But it's going now in Jesus' name. Ghost! Be healed in Jesus' name. What's up? Janice, it's good to see you. What do you need? Just have some soul wounds, you know? What's that? Not quite gone yet. What is that? What do you... Okay. Memories of the past. Unforgiveness. Uh, attacks, from your family. attacks, just family problems. Well, those are, those, those, are, those are, see, what, look, no, look, look, look here, look here. Those are just opportunities to love, to bless, to learn not to allow your emotions to be caught away with things that are not of the spirit of the living God. How else are you going to learn? But do I need to? Today it does. Okay. Well, it doesn't need to. There's a way. There's a way to be protected now. There's a way to be protected. I know it hurts. I understand the human part of it. I don't understand. I don't think I don't understand the human dimension of it because I do. I understand the human dimension. I'm just telling you, there's a realm of glory where you've been so filled up with everything that you have need of. doesn't matter where people are hurting and miserable. You're able to let the love of God flow through you to meet their need rather than being caught up in and coming under the authority of their problem. True. Yeah. So this is why I want... <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. Well, in the name of Jesus, I command you, Janice, in Jesus' name, to be filled with the Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost. This is the supply of heaven so that you can hook up with the streams, the healing streams. This is the supply of heaven so that you can he hook up with the flow of holy emotions rather than to come in under the other kinds of emotions. So right now in Jesus' name, just receive. Just receive. Just receive. Just lift your hands towards heaven and call it done. Receive. Say, Lord, I just receive from you right now. That's just, just, yeah, just lift your hands a little bit higher. Somebody said, well, God, me lift my hands, throw me off balance. I know you didn't, but, you know, because it's true. You, you lift your hands, you kind of get thrown off balance a little bit. We want you to find a balance in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you listen to me with everything that God has everything that God has promised us and all the provision that he has brought to us has made available to us to live this glorious life. It's conditional. Because we cannot do it our own way and end up with his blessing. That's why it's conditional. So he said, I got this for you, but you got to walk over here. I got this for you, but you got to stand right here. You can't stand over there. You got to stand here. You can't do it that way because that way is going to lead to death or destruction or problem. You got to do it this way. So he teaches us how to raise our children. He teaches us how to interact with our spouse. How, he teaches us a proper relationship with people around us. He teaches us how to represent him. He teaches us to obey the spiritual laws of life. We can't disobey the spiritual laws of life and not end up with a ticket. You tired of getting a ticket? It's more than you can pay.
I started passing a truck coming up um, over the 395 outside of, just outside of, uh, Mo in Mono County. And it's, I came around the truck and it was clear for me to go. Then I didn't even see it coming. I saw a double line. Then I saw a policeman. I saw his lights. I immediately pulled over. And so he, he, before he got turned around, I was already pulled over waiting on him. He comes up and he says, well, obviously, obviously, you know what you did wrong. I said, yeah, sorry, I didn't see it coming. He said, okay, well, you got some more of those on down the road. It's when we try to run away that we're going to get a big ticket. Uh, and act like, well, what? 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 We're going to just double your ticket right now. Anyone? Let me give you a piece of wisdom. Let me give you a piece of wisdom. If any time you, you do something wrong on the highway, immediately pull over. If you see a policeman, if he looks like he's coming right, just immediately pull over and tell the truth. And when he says, how fast were you going? Officer, I'm sorry, I was going too fast. You know what? You're going to have mercy. When you don't, and I'm telling you, it's a spiritual law of life as well. When you act like, well, what? When you're not willing to confess your sin and deal with it. I mean, I give, I'm telling you, I practice this. Ann and I got pulled over one time, and, and the, the policeman said, I, I cannot believe that you tell the truth like this. He said, that's exactly how fast you were going. He said, this is rare. Because I have a speedometer, too. The real problem is people who are violating things and they're unconscious of it. They need the big ticket so that they can get conscious. Are you listening to me? Because I'm not talking about the highway patrol. I'm talking about the highway of heaven. Well, I have something to give you. I'm going to give it to you freely, but you've got to go ahead and receive it freely. Can't earn it. Can't make other people earn it either. So you just forgive right now. You just let it go. Just forgive it. Just forgive it. Just forgive it. Say, I love. Because you don't ever get to forgive until you love. Because love begets mercy. Mercy begets forgiveness. So there's a Holy Ghost flow for you to get the love. You know, I've discovered that 90% of family problems can go away when you quit arguing. <laughs> as soon as you no longer allow your emotions to be swept away by whatever it is they're saying, because everybody's right in their own eyes and everybody's, uh, the other person's always wrong. So why get in it? Why get in even get in it? Just bless. Just bless and bless. You got to... A sore throat? Cough? For two months. Well, in the name of Jesus, cough goes from you. Jesus' name, I command to go. Be healed. Swallow. Breathe in real deep. What? Do something you couldn't do. <laughs> to testify that what God has done for you. Don't be in doubt. Don't be a doubting heart. Just believe. Just receive it. You receive it. Listen. Listen. There are times when we pray. You listen to this. I want you to understand. There's times when we pray and immediately, immediately, instantaneously, the miracle comes. The healing happens. The pain goes. There's other times that, the, that the, it doesn't appear that the healing's come, that the pain is gone. But you've received. We prayed and you've received it. And so you just go ahead and you just begin to exercise. It's done. You know, whatever it is, whether, you know, whether it's a frozen up arm or a, a cough that hasn't gone away for two months. See, one of the doctrines that I believe is being lost to the church is a doctrine of living in divine health. But you don't get to live in divine health unless you have a continual divine flow. Ha! Ha ha. Or at least you know how to get into the, the divine flow. Maybe it's not even continual, but you know how to every day be in the divine flow. I know people who preach three times a day. And every time they preach, two to three times a day, 
And every time they preach, they go not only for the word of God, but a move of God. You know that they've, they've got a strong flow in their life. Huh? Well, I've discovered that you don't have to be preaching three times a day to have a strong flow of God in your life, but you've got to touch heaven three times a day to have, this, to have the same kind of flow. What's wrong with you? Huh? Anything wrong with you? Is everything right with you? Is everything right with you? Huh? Yes. Well, that's good. Because what if the Lord looks at you one day and goes, is everything right with you? And the spirit of truth is there. You better be able to say, yes, sir. It is. Well, why? Because then you need to break out into the song. Because I'm washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. And my garments are spotless. They are white. Tear than snow. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And then the Father will say, you're right. That's right. Okay. You're, you're good. You hear me? What's wrong with you? You want to walk in? Well, let me just say this. You are. God bore, gave you the new birth in the righteousness of God. He's given to you. It's a gift. Let me, I want everybody to understand this. God gives to us as a gift his righteousness. It's a gift. Now the issue is, are we willing to learn it and walk in it and to mature in it and develop in it? Do you understand me? You are born into the righteousness of God. Don't mistake this. You're, if you're waiting for another day, it, that other day isn't going to come. The only way you will be established is to believe. The only way that this becomes a living reality is that you accept and believe what God has said. That's the faith of it. See, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Well, what, well to what righteousness do I believe? The righteousness of God that has been given to me in Christ Jesus. He bore my sins on, in his own body on the tree that now I'm cut off to sin. Now I live under righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that's you right now. You step into the faith realm right now. In Jesus' name. And G I want a Holy Ghost breakdown in this life, Father. I ask you to, that, that, that your servant will reach the melting point. Huh? You know, I, I, I used to, I used to have to determine melting points of various different chemical compounds in one of the jobs that I had. And you sit there and you watch for that hard thing to turn to liquid. I feel like that many times when I'm laying hands on people. I just like hold my hands there just waiting for the melting point. We just keep going up the fraction of degrees, fraction of degrees. And the more refined you want to be, sometimes it gets a little bit difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you need to practice losing uh, control <laughs> on a daily basis. You need to practice getting into the joy and being happy. Some people just need to practice. It's just not a thing that's common to their life. Joy is just like, it's a rare picture. And, uh, and if you're going to be strong in it, listen, the word for 2015 is this one word. I don't you forget it. What is it? Participate. Participate. Well, I want to go on the Holy Ghost. Participate. What is the Holy Ghost doing? The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. You got to participate. You have to participate. You need to stand there. You know, you know. You, you, I'm, I'm participating with joy. You are? Yeah. How? How's that work? How's that work? How's that work? How's that work? If I walk up to some of you and I say, pray in the Holy Ghost right now, then you begin because you gave yourself to that. You became strong, right? Jesus. Jesus' name. But if I walked up to you and I said, I want you to start joining in the Holy Ghost right now. I want to see this flow of the joy. Some of you just like, it would be hard to come. Why? Why? It's because, is it because you're lost and undone and a miserable sinner and God doesn't care? No, it's just you weak. You weak in participating with God in that area. So we want you to just give yourself to righteousness, joy, and peace. In the Holy Ghost. Something that the Spirit of the Lord 
operates. So you say to Jesus, you say to Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, give me the drink of joy. And you, just, you begin to talk to him, Lord, I, I, I ask you to just fill me up with the joy. Holy Spirit, I ask you to teach me how to yield myself to joy. Because I'm tired of being sorrowful and sad and making everybody else sad when they have to look at me. I'm tired of being, I'm tired of being grumpy and I'm tired of complaining. Because I'm telling you right now, you know what joy will beget? Thanksgiving. You get happy, you get thankful. It just works that way. What do you need? A sinus problem. You have a sinus problem. Lift your hands towards heaven. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that whatever this sinus problem is, that it goes from you and doesn't return. <laughs> huh? Now, I prayed the prayer of faith. You've got to receive the prayer of faith. So just stand right there. You know, one of the reasons I like to use oil sometimes is because I like people to recognize it's still on them when they walk down the road. Still on them. The prayer is still on them. Now, whether or not you're going to agree with God. So what if you came to the altar and you said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new creation. Wash away my sins. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I give myself to you. And then you walk away and say, I'm not sure if I'm saved. But you're not. You have to believe. You have to just believe. God said it. It's a done deal. So, Father, we thank you for the capacity of faith to believe and receive those things that belong to the miracles and the gifts of healing. Sinus infection doesn't even take, look, a sinus infection, a sinus infection doesn't even take a miracle. Now, I just had a woman email me the other day asking me to come up to Boise, Idaho and plant a church. Her daughter came and had no olfactory organ. She couldn't smell. All we just said was, in Jesus' name, smell. And she the first thing she ever smelled in her life was my bad breath. <laughs> now, that was a miracle. This isn't a miracle. This is easy. Uh huh? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that your daughter experienced the healing touch of heaven right now. <laughs> I I can't smell at all. First thing you smell is the old garlic breath of a preacher. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How's your sinuses? What, how do you, do you huh? No swelling. Well, just lift your hands towards heaven. I want you to feel good from the crown. Did you know that Father wants you to feel good from the crown of your head, so your free spirit, soul, and body? Does everybody know that? Are you ready for that? This is what he wills. If that's what he wills, then all we have to do is will it too, and it's ours. In Jesus' name. You know, I, I've, I've met people, I've known people, just very, very determined people, and, and they've, they've accomplished great things because they willed it. They willed it. They didn't do it by the Spirit of the Lord. They didn't even know God. They just willed it. How about when Father goes to willing something? Yeah. I'm talking about Heavenly Father goes to willing something. He just willed it. If you can understand that, if you can grab a hold of it, all you have to do is agree with His will. That's it. I just lay hold of His will. He willed it. Father's in charge. I want Him to be in charge. He's a great Father. He is. He's a great Father for you. He's a great Father. Be filled with the Spirit. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Right now in Jesus' name, right out of your belly flows. These rivers of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And, and dear people, when you step into this realm, don't, don't stop. 
Don't stop. Don't just, don't, when you step in this realm, just keep flowing. When you, when you finally find the joy, when you finally step into the joy, don't take a break. Huh? When you finally step into the peace, just stay right there. Don't move. Don't move. There is a place, a spout where the glory comes out. Just stay right there. Huh? <laughs> And, and the beautiful thing of it is, is the Lord allows us. It's a disposition of a heart. It's a place in relationship with Him. So it doesn't matter if we're in prison at midnight. You can be right, right, you can be right there at, at this place, the position, the spout where the glory comes out. It doesn't matter where you're at. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I want everybody to come worship the Lord with your, with, your, with your tithes and with your offerings, with your giving. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Bless them. Tell them that you love them. Somebody said, well, I just want more love in my life. Then participate with it.